All right, so I'm going to work another example of angular linear velocity. This one's a little bit more complicated. Um, I'm going to do like a pulley system. We're going to have one pulley here, which has a radius of six centimeters. I have a larger pulley here, and this is 20 centimeters for the radius. They're connected by a belt. So as this spins, it drives the belt to make this spin. Uh, it's something that you, this happens every, everywhere. We use in automotives and pretty much anywhere in engineering, you're going to see something similar to this. You may even see it where this has teeth and this has teeth and they interconnect. As one spin, it makes the other one spin. Now, with this, let's say that this is revolving at 150 revolutions per minute. I want to know the angular velocity of this circle. I know the revolutions per minute of this circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to define these. I'm going to call this 1 and I'm going to call this 2 to make my life easier. And I'm going to look and see well, how are they connected. Well, they're connected by this belt. And this belt is moving in a linear fashion, keyword linear. That means that these guys share the same linear velocity. So I need to know what my linear velocity is because these are going to have the exact same linear velocity. So let's just dive into this. I need to find the linear velocity of this circle because that's how fast the belt's moving. And once I know that and I know how fast the belt's moving, well that belt is what's making this move and I know the linear velocity of this circle and I can work backwards to find the angular velocity. Okay. So first things first, I'm going to say my angular velocity of my first pulley is going to be my 150 revolutions per minute. And I'm going to multiply it by 2 pi, and this is my radians per revolution. My revolutions cancel, and this simply gives me 300 pi radians per minute. All right. That's this angular velocity. Now to find the linear velocity, I just multiply it by the radius. So my velocity is going to be my 300 pi radians per minute times my radius, which is six centimeters per every radian. Because one radius is one radian. My radians cancel. And this gives me 1800 pi centimeters per minute. That's perfect. That is my linear speed. So my linear speed here is 1800 pi centimeters per minute. Now I need to find my angular velocity here. Well, I know V, they both share V. So I have a formula V is going to be my angular velocity of my second one times my two times my radius. What am I thinking? Times my radius. Well let's plug everything in. I know that I have eighteen hundred pi centimeters per minute equals my angular velocity of the second one times the radius, which is twenty centimeters per radian, we're going to move this over and I'm going to get 1800 pi centimeters per minute times a radian 20, a radian over 20 centimeters is going to be my omega 2, the zeros go away, 180 divided by 2, so I get 90 pi radians per minute. And that is my omega 2. Not terribly bad. You just kind of have to stay in the process. Just kind of stay step by step. Um, make sure your units match up because if you look here, my centimeters canceled, which left me radians per minute, which is perfect because that's what my angular velocity will be, will be radians per minute. Hi, I'm Mr. Buzzman, and these videos are supplemental instruction for my students. If you found the video enjoyable, make sure you click the like button and click subscribe, as well as the bell for notifications to receive future videos on high school mathematics.